talented guy at this point. Um, you know, one of those athletes that was great in high school, great in college, and then comes to the NFL. And I, I, you know, early on, especially, I don't think he really knew how to handle, um, working smartly, uh, knowing exactly what's important and what's not, um, and trying to just focus on the things that are going to get him better. So I, you know, I, I think he still probably has some frustrations built up over that. And I haven't had a chance to look at the play yet, but you know, the flea flicker when the, uh, I think it ended up in Thielen's hands, uh, apparently Treadwell was wide open on that one and that could have, you know, caused further frustration. So, you know, he's got to learn how to, how to deal with that better. Um, but I did think that it looked like they were starting to play Aldrick Robinson more toward the mm -hmm. end of the game. And yep. I think, you know, the penalty had something to do with that and probably just, uh, you know, Treadwell's, uh, inability to, you know, put negative emotions aside and just go out and play the game had something to do with it. Um, but Aldrich Robinson also offers them a much more explosive player. And when you're trying to come from behind, that's probably the type of guy that you want in there. Treadwell, I think, is is a really good run-blocking receiver. Unfortunately, that's not the type that uh, you want to spend a first-round pick on, and that's not the type that's going to get paid after their rookie contract. Right. Uh, it, it is amazing. You know, if, if the Vikings had chosen better – with the Troy Williamson pick, if they had chosen better with the Treadwell pick, you know, those are two competitive era uh, Viking teams that could have really done a lot with, with players. I mean, they could have drafted a good offensive lineman where they drafted Treadwell, you know, uh, it, it could have basically solved two problems. They wouldn't be force feeding uh, Treadwell playing time right now. And they'd have a better offensive line. Uh, so, you know, we go back to the old thing. Spielman has in general, built a very strong roster, but his misses are kind of the, the big glaring ones at skill positions. Uh, yeah, let's I mean, go ahead. Well, when you look at Williamson and, and Treadwell, I mean, I think Williamson was a far bigger bust than Treadwell and they're, they're two completely different players, but and, and different parts of the first round too. Yeah, true. And you know, the other thing though, I think that that's, that's frustrating with Treadwell is, you know, he's supposed to be this, big, strong receiver. He's not, he never was going to be this huge, deep downfield threat, but he was supposed to be the big body guy. And when you look at the, the fourth down pass, that got knocked away from him. That's really the sort of catch that you want a guy like him to make. You expect, um, you know, the big body, big hands box out the guy from behind. So he can't get to the ball and, you know, bring it in strong. And that just wasn't the case. So, you know, it certainly wasn't an uncontested drop, but you would hope that a guy like that could make make that catch when needed. Exactly. I'll be taking my uh, iPad, which I take on all my trips. I spend a lot of time with it on planes, and I drop it a lot. It's got all kinds of cracks. I'm going to be taking the fixology repair in Mall of America. It's up by the Nordstrom's on the third floor. I walk by it all the time. I'm going to go visit my friend John Hedges and let him fix that up for me. You can also go to the downtown location uh, in the Skyway, uh, just south of the Wells Fargo Center. And, or you can just go online, check them out at fixologyrepair.com. There are some things in life that you just can't live without. Now, whether it's a special piece of jewelry, a watch, or even your smartphone, you want it in working condition. At Fixology Repair, we are committed to restoring your pieces so that everything works or fits the way it ought to. Watch servicing, chain repair, and broken screen replacements are just a few of the services that we offer at Mall of America. Please visit us at FixologyRepair.com or at FixologyMN on Twitter to learn more. Mention this ad and get a 10% discount on our services. Tell you what, the league is fascinating, Tim. Uh, you had Rams, Packers, great game, fascinating game. Uh, you have the Rams undefeated. Then you had the Saints-Vikings game, which was also fascinating and pretty dramatic. And then you add in the defending champion Eagles, who kind of are hanging in there. Uh, you have the, the NFC East, which is very flawed, but still interesting. Uh, you have the Seahawks, Seattle Seahawks. It looked like they still have some life in them. Uh, and then you have the Bears looking like, you know, looking like one of the better teams in the NFL all of a sudden. Then you have the Patriots and the Chiefs. Tell you what, the league has it going on. And I'm the first to criticize the NFL when I see something wrong. But, man, it's, it, it's been so entertaining through eight weeks. It, it has. And, you know, the 
the thing that I think is going to hurt the Vikings is, okay, you know, you got the, the Rams and the Saints at the top of the NFC, and they've lost to both of those, those teams. And, uh, you know, maybe getting too far away from them where, you know, they're not going to have an opportunity. The Vikings are not going to have much of an opportunity to secure one of those top two spots in the NFC. And so if the Vikings are going to make the playoffs, they're probably going to have to play in the first round. I think at this point, you're playing for a first round home field uh, advantage and then take it on the road and see what you can do. The, the one positive to that, though, is I think this team has performed fairly well on the road. I mean, they went out and they beat the Eagles. And, yeah. Um, you know, so I, I think that helps that this team can travel a little better than some other teams in the past. Certainly didn't see that in the NFC Championship game last year, but I think Kirk Cousins is, is well equipped to handle things on the road. And you know, I found it interesting um, on on Sunday night that I thought that the defense had a lot of issues getting the right personnel on the field, getting everyone on the same page. They they were a little late in some of their their adjustments and and personnel swappings that they did. And I think the crowd had something to do with that. I also think, you know, the, you know, as, as much as, as they want to say, Hey, let's make it tough on the quarterback to, to, uh, to hear, to, to get the calls out to his offensive linemen, to his receivers. Um, in some instances, I think that hurt the Vikings more than it hurt the saints. And then the other thing is, I think the Vikings were also because of injuries and because of who they were playing we're trying to rotate in a lot of different personnel packages. And so um, ultimately I don't think that hurt them, but it, it certainly had the potential to hurt them. So I think they kind of got away with a few instances there where they were late getting guys on the field or late uh, getting everyone on the same page. Yeah. Those are really good observations. Uh, you know, as a newspaper guy writing on deadline at night, trying to write during the game, sometimes I don't catch all those nuances when I'm watching live, which is one of the challenges for a, for a newspaper person on deadline. So those are, those are things I, I kind of noticed, but I didn't notice them in the detail you did. So I appreciate you bringing them up. Uh, let's do predictions are stupid. Let's preview the Lions game briefly and get a final thought. We do want to also thank Tony Hoagland, H-O-A-G-L-U-N-D, your State Farm agent in Champlin. He sponsors a number of shows, also participates in the Minnesota Sports Fan Show, and uh, handles my insurance and Michael's, Michael Russo's insurance. Hey, Minnesota sports fans. This is your local State Farm agent, Tony Hoagland. I need you all to ask yourselves this question. If you're in an at-fault car accident and you are sued for $700,000, how much of that $700,000 will my current insurance company pay? If you are unsure or can't answer all $700,000, you need to give us a call. State Farm has been number one in car insurance since World War II and number one in homeowners insurance since 1964. For a no-obligation review of your current policies, call us at 763-421-4900 or check out our website at www.champlininsurance.com. All right, let's uh, let's start with just a little bit of a Lions analysis. This division is very tight right now. The Lions look like the weakest team, but they also have enough explosiveness to be dangerous. Uh, they have three very good receivers. Stafford can sling it around. Uh, you know, they're not a good team, but they're not exactly a fun team to play either. No, I mean, I, I think they'll they'll certainly present their challenges. I think that they have become more balanced now. I think carry on Johnson's been a, a good addition for them. You know, right now they're kind of middle of the pack, both with their offense and their defense, their run defense, however, is something that can be exploited. And you would hope that the Vikings could, you know, get Latavius Murray back into the, the hundred yard type of game, or if Dalvin cook comes back, you know, combined between those two 150, 160 yards and, you know, be able to to build a lead and then maintain the lead by being able to run the ball and, and use the clock the way it should. So um, to me, those are, are kind of the keys to to beating the Lions, which honestly the Vikings should. I mean, this, this kind of is one of those um, heading into the bye after that game. You want to have that, get on a, uh, a positive note and not drop your record to, to 500. Um, it, it's it, to me, it's a really important game. Then you go into the bye. Okay, we we have everything in front of us. We're 
decent so far in in the division, and we have a chance to get healthier than they have been, which has really been a problem the last few weeks. All right, let's do predictions are stupid. What is your prediction for this game? I think the Vikings win this one, and I, I think it's uh, a you know comparatively easy game. Uh, I'm going to say somewhere around 31 to 20. Yeah, I agree. I, I think the Vikings will be able to move the ball. I think the Lions will make some big plays, but they'll also make a mistake or two. And the Vikings will, I think the Vikings will play with great urgency and maybe not the nervousness that you saw in some, some factions uh, on Sunday night. So I'm going to say Vikings 27, Lions 19, something like that. Uh, you know, basically we have the same thoughts on that. Uh, let's get to our final thoughts. Uh, I do want to thank Mississippi Pub, Beaver Island Brewing, WizKids.tech. Twill in the United Galleria, uh, FixologyRepair.com, uh, Bite Squad, and your State Farm agent, Tony Hoagland. One last reminder, uh, Bite Squad, use the promo code TALKNORTH, one word, uh, for your first delivery free. We appreciate your support in that way. Uh, give us a final thought, whether it's looking back or looking ahead. Well, I mean, for a Vikings final thought, I would say that I, I think this team is still set up very well to make the playoffs. Uh the majority of the really tough teams are behind them. They still have the the Patriots to play and they still have a lot of work to do in the division where, you know, they can, um, you know, I, I still believe that this team is the best team in the division. I think they can be one of the, the best teams in the conference. And so, you know, it, it's, it's there in front of them to do it. And I think they can do it uh, where they win the division and end up in the playoffs. One non-Vikings, uh, or well, one sort of tangential Vikings final thought is I would encourage our listeners to check out the Jeff Diamond show. I really like that. Um, oh, he thanks offers for mentioning a, that. Yeah, it, I mean, it's a good perspective on the NFL, on the Vikings, um, from the, the front office perspective, and also a historical perspective where he can give you a little more insight to things he saw when, when he was kind of in charge of the Vikings or the Titans. Um, and then a non one, I, I've really enjoyed the Cheryl Reeve show, to be honest with you. I, well, thanks. You know, she is, she's uh, great. Uh, yeah. I mean, she's, she's opinionated. She's not afraid to put it out there and she's also given you a great look at her, her personality and, and a little bit of her personal life too. So I've, uh, I've appreciated the, uh, the home improvement aspect of the Cheryl Reeve show too. <laughs> <laughs> which uh you know that's the thing is everything cheryl talks about she's an expert on and i am not an expert on so i just shut up as much as i possibly can on that show which i know yeah. i appreciate she's a she's a great listen i i mean you you're not always going to agree with her but you're going to know that she's passionate about what she's talking about yeah absolutely well i appreciate bringing that up tim i i probably should have mentioned those earlier uh, i was just kind of buzzing through a monday here uh but i do appreciate it uh final so my final thought and this is kind of what my column was about. They're not in bad shape, but but I think we all looked at the schedule going into the season and said, you know, if they survive the first five games, they're going to be fine, and the schedule gets easier. Here's what's changed. With the exception of December 18th, home against Miami, which I think we can all mark down as a probable victory in some, unless something strange happens, every the, most of the other games look tougher than you would have imagined. And here's the big key. Chicago, went into the season thinking Chicago was kind of just feel going to feel their way. Then they trade for Khalil Mack, and then they start figuring out how to run the offense. And all of a sudden, they look really difficult, and you still got to play them twice. So, And then at Seattle, I thought the Seattle was on the decline. Now they're starting to figure it out themselves. So I, I see three games on the schedule that I think we thought would be victories and now they look like real challenges. I think that's where the Vikings are going to have to find a way to, to pull out dif difficult victories. Well, and, you know, frankly, you know, I, I, I think that the Vikings are a, a very good team. They're not great yet. They're still kind of, I think, working through some things, and a lot of it has to do with injuries. But there's, there's nobody that they can overlook at this point. I mean, we saw what happened against the Bills. And you'd, you'd hope that as, as the season goes on, that's not a game that the, they look back at and they just start kicking themselves for like, you know, a couple of years ago, it was Detroit where it was like, man, that's, you know, we really fell apart there. And so, um, you know, the, I think the Vikings are the best team in the division, but they're not always playing like it. And, uh, you know, they're just going to have to play good ball, smart ball, limit the turnovers, 
in order to to maintain uh, to do what they should against the teams that they should beat, but are going to be competitive games. Great stuff as always from Tim the Otter. Check out VikingUpdate.com. We'll be back next week.